good afternoon so um this brother today i've read the first 10 pages of the jesuit guide to almost everything and i guess i'm here to share what i've taken away just like yesterday i think it's good to spread good things so here goes Okay, so basically the Jesuits are the Society of Jesus founded by Saint Saint Ignatius Loyola who was a 16th century soldier turned mystic. I'm not sure what a mystic is but basically he was a saint. And says here, the way of Saint Ignatius is about finding freedom. Freedom to become the person you're meant to be. To love, to accept love, to make good decisions, to experience the beauty of creation and the mystery of God's love. So, what is spirituality? Um, spiritual, spirituality is the way of living in a relationship with God. So, within Christian belief, all spiritualities have the same focus. The desire for union with God, an emphasis on love and charity, and a belief in Jesus as the Son of God. Um, so, it says here, spirituality is like a bridge. It gets you from one place to another. Sometimes over perilous ground, etc. So it carries you over pitfalls, I guess. Something to think about. Every sp spirituality gives you a distinct passage to God. So the word Jesuit is not very familiar to me. And the only time I guess I've come across this word is Matthew Bowling. This uh, sprinter from... He was from a Jesuit school. So that was the only time I've ever heard of this word prior to this book. And basically what Jesuit, uh, the Jesuit group is, is I guess it's considered a spirituality. It's grouped together with the Benedictines, the Franciscans, the Carmelites, and the Cisterians. Yeah, so... So this book I'm reading here is mainly about the Jesuit guide. So we'll, we'll be talking about Jesuits. Uh, now, they were talking about four ways of understanding Ignatian spirituality. So how to define this term Ignatian spirituality? There are four ways. Uh. So the first way is to find God in all things. So I guess no matter what circumstance you might be in, no matter what you may be feeling, just look for God in that instance. Easier said than done, but you know, that is to be Jesuit, I guess. Number two is to be contemplative in action, which means I researched the word contemplative, I looked it up. It means expressing or involving prolonged thought. That means, I guess, think about your actions thoroughly before you carry them out. Number three is incarnational spirituality. So it means that, it means believing, believing that God can be found in the everyday events of our lives. A bit like point one, to be fair. And number four is sp Ignatian spirituality is about freedom and detachment. So these refer to not being tied down by unimportant things. For example, um, if your overriding concern in life is to make money, you may not be able to spend time with people who won't advance your career. You'll be less likely to take time off 
and even see others as tools or obstacles in your quest for upwards mobility. Quite relatable in this secular world, to be honest. Can relate to it quite well. So gradually, you might start to see everything as revolving around your job, career, and desire to make money. In essence, you make work your god. So what would San Ignatius say? Says here he would furrow his bow his brow and say that while you need to earn a living, you have to be careful not to let career become a disordered affection that prevents you from being free to meet new people. Spending time with those you love and viewing others as an end rather than a means. So let me break this word disordered affection down for you. So disordered because it is not life-giving. It doesn't involve selflessness. And affection because it appeals to you. In essence, in summary, how to define Ignatian spirituality. Number one is to find God in all things. Number two is to be contemplative in action. Number three is to look at the world in an incarnational way. Not sure what that means, but I'll pray about it again. Number four is to seek freedom and detachment. Thanks for watching. <laughs> ah, I forgot to add. Ultimately, we cannot know God completely, at least in this life. So St. Augustine says, If you can comprehend it, then it cannot be God, because God is incomprehensible. Food for thought.